2023 is not only going to be the year of the harvest, but I believe that 2023 is going to be year of a, of a mighty breakthrough. A mighty breakthrough. Matthew chapter 17, in verse 14, when you got it, say, I got it. Okay, it says, And when they had come to the multitude, a man came to him, came to Jesus, kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is an epileptic and he suffers severely. For he often falls into the fire and often falls into the water. So I brought him to your disciples. Someone say the disciples. But notice they could not cure him. They could not cure him. So then Jesus answered and said, oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him here to me. How many know that's the beauty of the Lord? He's a personal God. He's a personal Jesus. You can go to him with whatever your needs are. He said, bring him here to me. And, and Jesus rebuked the demon. He said, come out of him. And, and the child was cured from that very hour, that very moment. So then the disciples came to Jesus privately and they said, why could we not cast out, cast it out? Why could we not cast out this demon? They wanted to learn. They, they felt they had failed. How many know that, you know, we want to succeed at what God calls us to do. They felt they had failed. And, and Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief, for surely I say to you that if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, how many have some mountains in your life? How many had some mountains in 2022? He said, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. Now, here's the part I want you to catch. This is the part I really want to bring out this morning. He says, however, this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting. Father, bless the reading and the preaching of your word to our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, before you're seated, give your neighbor a high five and tell him you're going to have to fast for it. You may be seated. When I, wanted, when I was writing this sermon, I had three sermons to preach to you this morning. I had three sermons. And the Lord led me to preach this, this sermon. And when I was preparing this sermon, I wanted to entitle it, Fast For It. Somebody say, Fast For It. But the real heart of this message kind of came out of a, a, a Facebook post that I read. I know a lot of us are on Facebook. And sometimes people go on their Facebook and they post things. But this stood out to me some time ago where someone wrote, Nothing is working for me right now. They said, I'm lonely. I've been laid off from work. My mother is sick. I'm going through a separation and every door seems to be closing. The person went on to write, I feel alone and I wonder if God even cares for me. Now, we hear a lot of people talk about the things they're going through, but the thing that really grabbed my attention is when this person wrote at the end of that script, they wrote, I need a breakthrough. I need a breakthrough. That's what really got my attention. Because as we come into 2023, we're not only coming to a new year, but there could be some of you even here this morning that that's your heart's cry. You're saying, Lord, I, I need a breakthrough. I, I need a breakthrough in my walk. I need a breakthrough in my life. I need a breakthrough in my marriage. I, I, I might need a breakthrough in my health. I need a breakthrough in my, with my children. There, there's something that I need to happen. Maybe you've felt that before. Or if you know, you know somebody that says, I need a breakthrough. Well, I want to tell you, if they're not here in the house of the Lord, get them to Victory Outreach because there's breakthrough spirit at Victory Outreach. A, a breakthrough can be defined as a sudden or dramatic important development or an advance. Everybody say advance. That's the beauty of God is the Lord loves us so much that he doesn't allow us to stay stuck in our situation. But we serve a God that desires to advance us, to grow us, to build us, to move us, to take us from level to level to level. And when you read Matthew chapter 17, you find the formula for breakthrough. In, in Matthew 17, 21, he said, these only come out or these kinds only come out through prayer and what? 
Say it real loud. What? Fasting. fasting. Prayer and fasting. See, when you come to a place in your life when situations seem insurmountable, who's been there? Can I get any people to be honest this morning? You, you've just faced a situation that seems like it's never going to get better, or the situation seems insurmountable. When, when you face mountains that seem too hard to climb, or, or walls that are impenetrable, or you feel like even you're under spiritual attack. I, I know there could be some people here coming into this year, you're a little rattled, you're a little, you're a little afraid, you're a little shaken because of some spiritual attacks that took place last year. Come on, say something to me. You've been through some spiritual attacks. You knew it was the devil. You knew it was the enemy coming against you. You knew it was spiritual opposition in your life. Come on, say amen. Well, when you're facing these types of situations, sometimes as believers, we've got to reach a little bit farther. We've got to reach a little bit deeper. It, it, it takes a little bit more than worship. Come on. It takes a little bit more than just another church service and another sermon. Come on, somebody. It takes a little bit more than just opening up your Bible and rereading re the promises. Sometimes it takes a little bit more than prayer. What Jesus says, if you want to break through, you've got to break through through fasting. Oh, my God. Clap in this place. You got to break through through fasting. Now, I know. I know that that's hard. You're like, man, pastor, that's rough. I came to church the first Sunday of the year ready to be envisioned, ready to hear a message of hope. Fasting is a hard message, pastor. You're asking me to do the hardest thing it is to do in the kingdom of God. Come on, say something to me. Well, I want to tell you what the old prophets used to say. How many of we ought to listen to the old prophets of God? They said when you do what's hard first, Everything else becomes easy. Ah, when you do what's hard first, sometimes it's hard to pray. Sometimes it's hard to fast. Sometimes it's hard to deny that old flesh. Come on, somebody. How many would like to get that flesh under subjection this year? Sometimes it's hard to say no to those sweets and those goodies. Come on, somebody. But the old prophet said, if you do what's hard first, everything else becomes easy. When you can go through a fast Praise becomes easy. Prayer becomes easy. Giving becomes easy. Serving becomes easy. We should fast. Because when you fast, that's when the breakthrough comes. You say, Pastor, I need a breakthrough. Well, let me tell you, breakthrough, breakthroughs only happen when you seek them. Breakthroughs don't happen until you seek them. It's almost like you got to get, you know, hungry enough. You got to get thirsty enough. You got to, like we say in Victor Arts, you got to get sick and tired of being sick and tired. You got to be a little bit tired of being defeated and tired of not being able to have that fullness of joy. And, and, and you got to tap back into the John 10, 10 that says the thief comes to steal, kill and destroy. But Jesus says, I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. Come on, church. There's an abundant life. There's an abundant breakthrough. There's, an, a, there's a promise for your life, but you got to want it. You, 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 you got to go after that breakthrough. David said in the book of Psalms, chapter 77, verse 22, he says, I cried out to God with my voice and he gave ear to me. And it says, in the day of my trouble, I sought the Lord in the day of my trouble. I wanted the breakthrough in the day of my trouble. I needed the breakthrough in the day of my trouble. Nothing else will do. Come on. Nothing else will do. No relationship would do. No money would do. Come on, no, no emotional experience would do. I, I needed the breakthrough. He says, I sought the Lord. My hand was stretched out without ceasing. Imagine we have children. Who has children? Especially those little children. Who has those little, little children? Or you've had little children. And, and when they want something, they stretch. Come on, they stretch out that hand. Mommy, come on, mommy. And you're cooking. Mommy, give me some SpaghettiOs. Mommy, give me some Fideo. Come on, mommy. Give me, come on, somebody. Give me some mac and cheese. And they keep that hand stretched out until mommy pays attention and gives them what they want. And that's the posture we need coming into 2023. We got to say, Daddy, I'm not going to stop stretching out my hand until you give me the breakthrough. I'm, come on, church. I'm not going to I'm not going to relent. I'm going to keep on praying. I'm in trouble. I need a break. You, you got to seek after the breakthrough. You got to be willing to cry out to God. See, God wants to do something special in your life this year. I believe it. Who believes it? I believe it. I believe he's prepared something mighty. That's why we're fasting. 
That's why we're taking 21 days starting tomorrow to separate ourselves, to, conquer, to consecrate ourselves. These first seven days are going to be consecration. These first seven days, all you're going to do is you're just knock, knocking stuff off your life. Talk to me. Come on, you're consecrating. Somebody got to put down the phone, put down the text. You got to text people back right away. That's what I'm learning. My wife is teaching. You don't got to text them back right away just because they text you. Don't mean you got to Come on, somebody. They could wait. Come on, I'm separating to God. I'm hearing from God. Don't interrupt. <laughs> don't interrupt what God is doing in my life right now. We're going to consecrate. Someone say consecrate. First seven days, we're going to consecrate. God wants to do something special. God wants to do something fresh. God's prepared a breakthrough for you. A breakthrough in your prayer life, a breakthrough in your worship, a breakthrough in your marriage, a breakthrough in your relationships. There's a breakthrough for your money. Listen, I don't know why you're quiet. When I hear these things, I get excited. I say, I want that for my life. I want that for my ministry. Come on, somebody. He's prepared a breakthrough in your personal life. He's even created a breakthrough for your mental health. Hey, come on, somebody. Those old lies of the devil and all that stinking thinking and nursing and rehearsing the same problems. And those said, you've been circling this mountain too long. It's time to break camp. I've got something big. I got something prepared for you. Come on, church. When you fast, something happens. See, some of us, we have yet to experience answered prayer because really we lack the faith for it. We, we lack the faith. That was the disciples issue when Jesus came and he began to address why they couldn't break the child through. They said, you, you, know, you didn't have the faith. Your, your faith was not there. But fasting does some things for us. And I want to pass this on to you. I think that are so important. Who's ready for this? The first thing is that fasting is going to rekindle your desire to pray. It's going to rekindle that desire. In, in the book of Psalms, chapter 35, verse 13, if you're a person who fasts, you know the scripture. He says, I humble myself with fasting and my, that my prayer would return to my own heart. See, everything flows from the heart. And when you, when you fast, what are you really doing? What's the essence of fasting? It's humbling yourself. You're humbling yourself. You, 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 you're bowing down before God. You're saying, Lord, less of me and more of you. It's like John the Baptist said, I must decrease. Oh, I feel that. Oh, I feel some of y'all need to decrease. A little bit too much of you last year. We need less of you and more of him. Can I hear an amen? Less of Al and more of Jesus. Less of Pastor Miller and more of G. Come on, let, come on, somebody. We got to decrease. When you fast, you hum, you're humbling. You, you, you're saying, Lord, I got to get low so you can get high. I got to get low. I, I got to humble myself. And something happens when you fast is then you begin somehow supernaturally to regain the desire to pray. We know that you can pray without fasting, but you cannot fast without praying. Somebody say hunger pains. And that's why this is a hard message for some of you. Because, you're, oh, pastor, you come in with a fasting message the first Sunday there. Well, yeah, it's a hard message. And the reason it's hard is because you fear that headache. That when you get away from that sugar, you, you push away that bread. Talk to me. You put those flour tortillas in the trash. Come on now. You switch to corn. Corn tortillas. Is that Daniel Friendly? Can you do corn? All right. So you go to a corn tortilla. And now that sugar, that sugar's leaving your body. Come on. No more, no more cakes and no more sweets and no more cornbread and no more goodies. Can I hear an amen? You're just pushing it. You put, right? And then that little headache comes. Come on, church. That little headache comes. No more little sweet, sour candies. A little headache comes. Right? And you fear that headache. Or you feel that tiredness. Or you feel that weakness in your body when, you, when you're cleansing yourself. Come on, somebody. But, but what are we supposed to do when we feel those hunger pains? Those hunger pains. Watch this. That's the alarm to pray. In that moment when you would normally reach for a Twinkie. I don't know if anybody still eats Twinkies these days. Or a cookie. Come on, somebody. Or that little snack by the coffee in your office. And you're like, I'm going to eat that snack. 
I slap that hand and say, no, I'm going to pray instead because I'm consecrating myself and I'm believing for a great breakthrough in my life and a great breakthrough in my family. Come on, church. I want to have a breakthrough. Who wants to experience a breakthrough? <laughs> say breakthrough. breakthrough. When, when you fast, you get that desire to pray. Your hunger shifts. You're no longer hungry for, you know, to feed this carnal thing. This carnal body, it puts the flesh, you know, you know what it does? It puts the flesh in its proper place. It, it slows down. Fasting, it, it slows down carnality. It really does. It puts the brakes on carnality and ungodly desires. And, and it takes us from the pleasure zone of life. This is why the church lacks power, because we spend too much time in the pleasure zone. Can I preach it? Too much time in the pleasure zone and gratifying instant gratification. Come on. Instant gratification. And, and, and we spent too much time in that pleasure zone. And God says, no, I don't want my church to exist in a pleasure zone. I want my church to exist in a power zone. Woo. Power zone. Power zone. So the first thing is that, that fasting, it rekindles our desire. The secondly, it restores and amplifies prayer power in your life. It amplifies. It's like taking those prayers and plugging them into an amplifier. Fasting intensifies, amplifies prayer power because now our bodies are, are quickened. It's amazing when you fast how you actually don't get tired. You get fired up. It really happens. Who's experienced it? Wave at me. You get fired up. Something in your heart just starts to burn. You start to burn even after just a few days, after just three days. Three days of fasting, just three days. First day is tough. Second day is tough. Third day is breakthrough. And then now you're in the third day and you're like, whoa, I feel good. You don't need an alarm clock to get up in the morning. Whoa, I'm up. Whoa, Jesus. Okay, where's the coffee? Can you have coffee on a fast? Yes. Because that's a double anointing if you can get it. You have a little coffee and, and you're now you're like, whoa, Jesus, come on now. That's a God... That's a God bean. Amen. Hebrews. 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 It's in the Bible. Hebrews. <laughs> and you get a little coffee and get your word and you're ready to pray. Come on, somebody say breakthrough. I'm going into a breakthrough. <laughs> say Hebrews. There's a clear channel. You're alert. You're vibrant. You're energized. You're, you're a clear channel for God. And what that does, church, and this is so important, especially for, for our church and for you and for your home, is it produces an atmosphere. Somebody say atmosphere. We got to protect your atmosphere. You got to take control of your atmosphere. That atmosphere at home. You got to turn those, those shows off and those wicked shows and those magic shows and those horror movies. I can't believe Christians that watch so many horror movies and you wonder why you're afraid. You got a problem. Just turn the TV. You don't even need to fast. Just shut the TV off. You'll be all right. Atmosphere. When you begin to fast and you begin to separate yourself, all of a sudden something begins to change. The people aren't depressed and they're not with their head down and they're not struggling. All of a sudden, everybody's up. Ooh, hey, come on now. I'm moving into a new atmosphere, a new environment. It produces revival power. And that's what the church needs. It needs revival power. Some of you here today, you know, you're coming to church, but you're kind of, you need a revival. Revival's personal. It's personal. How do you know you need revival? How do you know you need it? You say, I don't, how do I know, Pastor? How do you, well, I know you know you need it when you know, service becomes ordinary. Right. And sermons become boring. And you don't have a shout and you don't have a song. That's the first thing the devil wants to take. He wants to take that song away from you. Because the joy of the Lord is our strength. And if you could take your song, you could take your joy. And if you could take your joy, come on, church. Who's going to get some stuff back, like Pastor Miller said? It, come on, if you could take your joy, he could take your strength to worship, your strength to serve him. 
We need revival power. Fasting brings revival power. And then thirdly, fasting is a faith producer. Think about it. You're, you're separating three days. You're separating seven days. You're separating 10 days. You're separating 21 days. I, I've, I've done it year, over a year ago. I did a fast of over 150 days. I was a lot skinnier then. Go check the video. Yeah, man. Eat once a day. Cut meat out of my, out of my life. No red meat. Just ate veggies and, and just ate like a bird. Once a day. You know why? Because I got addicted to the power of God. Woo! I started to realize in my life, let me say something to you. This is so personal important. That the more, the more I ate, the farther I felt from God. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't eat. You need to eat to live, but not live to eat. Maybe that's what some of you need. Some of you need to divorce your relationship from food. And then maybe sickness will leave your body. Woo, come on, somebody help me. Come on, somebody help. Maybe you'll get healthy. Maybe you'll get strong. Maybe you'll, come on, you'll get more spiritual. And I remember I just became so addicted to the presence of God. So addicted to that fire I felt in my gut. It was a fire from heaven. My heart burning constantly, always ready to preach, always ready to minister, always ready to lay hands. So I, would, I was there and I would never get called. I would get so bummed out because I'd be in other settings and with other preachers and I'd be fasting for 150 days. And, and then everybody's there and then they say, who are we going to call to pray? Who they? And they would call this guy. And I'm sitting there like, call me. <laughs> call me, man. I'm in the middle of a 150 day fast. I'm going to open up heaven in this place. But I never got called, amen. Brother so-and-so got called, and it was dead. <laughs> but when you are fasting, and you're separating to the Lord, you're ready for God to use you. You're ready for God to pour out his spirit through you. You're ready to break down some walls, and ready to break some chain. Come on, somebody who wants to move in the power of the Holy Ghost. It's a faith producer. It puts you in a place to believe God for the impossible. Don't you understand? That's the God we serve. We serve a God of the impossible, guys. He can heal sick bodies. He can restore marriages. He can bring wayward children home. He can begin to break curses and pour out finances and raise up the people. Come on, church. He can do mighty and impossible things, things that you may not believe and others may not believe. He's just looking for somebody that will fast for it. That will fast for the breakthrough. There, we say there is more. Who's heard us say that? Say, there is more. What are we saying when we say there is more? What are we really saying? We're saying there's a deeper dimension. There's a deeper dimension to this thing called faith. There's higher, higher mountaintops to this thing called faith. There's greater breakthroughs. There's greater miracles. There's greater things. Like imagine, and imagine God gets maximum glory when people like us obey the Lord. When people like you and I, people who are counted out, People didn't think much of us. They, they looked at us as maybe throwaways or they marginalized us. They said, what good could come out of San Diego? What good could come out of East L.A.? What good could come out of Logan or Shell Time? But look what the Lord has done. And guess what? God's not finished. He's just getting started. There's more that God desires to do for us. But we got to fast. Someone say, fast for it. Fast for it. Fast for it. What do you need? We all need different things. Who needs something? Who needs a breakthrough from the Lord? Let me see. Wave at me. Let me see you. I think every hand should be lifted. Come on now. Who needs a breakthrough? Even if you got everything and he's been good to you, he's, there's still things you need. Wave at me by faith, by faith, by faith, by faith. Huh? Fast for it. Why should you fast for it? Because there's a fast for it. There's always a fast for what your particular need is. That's right. We do fast, but we're all fasting for something different. 
There's a fast to please God. I love those fasts. When I was doing that 150-day fast, my prayer was twofold. I said, God, I just want to please you. I just want to be ready. And then my other, the other part of it was, Lord, I want my voice to be strong during this time. I want my sheep to be able to hear my voice. Fasting to please the Lord. Another fast is for holiness and separation. God, I just want to live separate. Another fast is for God to hear your prayer. Maybe you feel like you're hitting that wall and maybe you feel like these disciples, they couldn't cast that demon out. And Jesus said, these types of needs, it's more than prayer. You're going to have to do a little bit more on this one. Who could say amen? Yeah. And, and so you fast for that breakthrough. You, you fast for God to do that mighty thing. Then there's a fast to change God's mind. Then there's a fast for freedom and deliverance. Maybe you're bound up by something. You're bound up by something. There's, a, there's a, a foothold on you. You've been entrapped in a snare. That snare could be drugs. It could be alcohol. It could be a relationship, man. You don't realize sometimes relationships, and I'm not even talking about opposite sex relationships, even people that you probably shouldn't hang out with no more. You've outgrown them. Weird and strange loyalties. There's a fast to break that soul tie. There's a fast for revelation and wisdom. Say, I need some revelation. I, I think preachers should fast for that. Lord, give me some oily sermons. Give me some fresh bread. Give me some manna from heaven. Even worshipers could fast. Give me a song, Lord. Give me a fresh song, a fresh sound. I know prayer warriors fast for that. Give me insight and revelation and foresight. There's a fast for revelation and wisdom. Then there's a fast for health and healing. I want to get whole, God. I want to be well physically. I want to live and not die. I want to live. I want to live a long life. I want to live. I want to outlive my parents. My parents died young. I want to outlive my parents. My grandparents died young. I want to outlive my grandparents. God, I want to be healthy. I want to be healthy for my kids. I want to be healthy for my grandbabies. Come on, church. Come on, help me pray. I want to be healthy for those grandbabies. I, I got to get healthy. Who feels like you got to get healthy this year? But then there's also a fast for power. And as I get ready to bring it home, man, I want to talk to you about three things our church needs to fast for. How many know we should fast as a church? And that's what we're going to be doing. But the first thing is we should fast for power. Everybody say power. power. Say it like you need it. Say power. power. Acts 118 says, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses. And hear me, you can fast for power. You can fast for more power. You can fast for more of anything. The Bible says we can pursue every good gift. And you can fast for more power. We say, well, why would I do that? Because understand, power has been promised to you. Power has been promised to you. Promise in your leadership. Promise in your parenthood. Promise in, in your life. How many want to walk with greater power in their life? Come on, say power. So if God promises power, then you can ask God for more power. You can fast and pray for power. Understand why he gives us power. He doesn't give us power for status. He doesn't give us power so we can be showboats and, and, and glorify self and, and just show off. No, he gives us power not for status, but he gives us power for service. That's why some of you this morning, I'm going to say this. You need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Yeah. You need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. I remember one of our leaders who's been in our church now for over 10 years. He wasn't saved in this ministry, but he came through his wife's prayers. And they moved from the church they're in. They moved here. And they were a good church. He was a part of for a number of years. And I remember one day he came up to you in a service like this, like one we're going to have tonight. He goes, Pastor, i got to tell you something. He says, I was baptized in the Holy Spirit. I've been serving God now for 20-some years, 30 years. But it wasn't until I came to Victory Outreach that I was baptized in the Spirit and speaking in tongues. Oh I said, really? He goes, yeah. I go, and then he tells me, he goes, why do you think that happened? Now, that's a hard question for some, but for me, it wasn't. I said, the reason it happened is because now you need it. Ah. Wow. Wow. That's good. 
Now you need it. Yes, the nine fruit of the Spirit is the evidence of the indwelling of the Holy Ghost, but it's not the only evidence. God gives us his power in the measure of how he desires to use us. Come on, somebody. Some of you are overwhelmed in your marriage. You're overwhelmed in your family. You're overwhelmed with your children. You say, I don't seem to be able to make it. I'm always hitting this wall. Have you considered going to God and saying, Lord, I can't lead this family without your power. I can't lead these children without your power. I can't lead this ministry without your power. I can't run this business without your power. And when you ask God for power, power the bible says if you ask him for bread he will not give you a stone when you say god i've got a big task i've got a big load on my plate i'm speaking to somebody you're quiet but i'm speaking. i got a big load on my plate and i want a breakthrough when you ask him for power he will give you that power give him praise right now give him praise come on give him praise like you're ready to break through fast for power secondly as a church we've got to fast for purity purity in daniel chapter 1 verse 8 it says but daniel purposed his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's delicacies or with the wine which he drank therefore he requested of the chief that he might not defile himself when you study daniel's fast you'll find that the very reason he fasted was to stay pure to stay pure he was, they, were, they were captured by the Babylonians and brought into their society. In Babylon, they tried to change Daniel's name to Belteshazzar. And, what, and that's something that happens to people. That's what the world is trying to do. Because the world knows that if it can change your name, it could change your identity. It could change your identity. And if it could change your identity, then it could change your worldview. And if it could change your worldview, then it changes your source. It changes your source. And, and the reason our church and many churches should fast for purity is because we're in a battle. We're in a battle. Who's the battle against? We're, we're in a battle with Satan. We're in, ba in a battle with the world. And every, every week, the world is trying to infiltrate the house of God trying to infiltrate our beliefs, trying to infiltrate and change our identity and get us to loosen our bootstraps and getting us to weaken our message and getting us to tone down our praise and tone down our convictions and don't live black or white, live in the gray. Come on, come on. Come on somebody. When I was not saved, man, I knew what it was to live in the gray. And there ain't no hope in the gray. And there's no breakthrough in the gray. But when you serve God with conviction and you purify your life and you come out of the world, that's when the power of God starts to move. And what Daniel did is he fasted and they said and, and, and their life was on the line and, 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 he, and they were worried. But Daniel said to him, you just test us in 10 days. You test us in 10 days. Test how we look. Test how we feel. T test. Look at us. Inspect us after 10 days. And you will find that they came out 10 times better. I believe that some of you, as you fast for purity, you're going to look better than the world. You're going to be stronger than the world. You're going to be more joyful than the world. Come on, somebody. Another benefit of fasting for purity is when you have purity, you have clarity. Clarity. Daniel needed to be able to interpret the king's dream. And the king had a dream. And none of his magicians or any of his servants could interpret that dream. And all their lives were on the line. But Daniel said, I'm going to fast for that revelation. I'm going to fast for that word. And sure enough, as Daniel fasted for purity, that's when the clarity of God hit his life. See, something happens when you're pure. You can see better. You can hear more clearly. You're not easily clouded. You're not easily diverted. Come on. I feel like young people need this. You, you don't fall for every trick. Come on. Not every quote. You like hear quotes and you're like, oh, that's heavy. Now you're pure. You're like, that's nonsense. That doesn't line up with the word of God. That's a theory. That's somebody's opinion. Come on, somebody. That's a lie from the pits of hell. We need a generation of purity. We need a generation of clarity. 
And at the very least, you look at that thing and say, that might be for him, but that's not for me. Because I know the God I serve. And I know that the man that knows their God shall do great and mighty exploits. And I've been fasting and I've been separating myself to hear the voice of God. I'll tell you, if we have a generation like that, there'll be no limit to what we can do. I think there's time for some of you, as I get ready to close, to come out of that cloud. You're coming out of the cloud of confusion. You're coming out of the cave of fear. You're coming out of that, that diverted situation. Those things that have been messing with your mind and messing with your spirit. This week when you fast, it's going to be broken. You're coming into a new season of clarity. A new season of clarity. As they come to the keyboard, the third thing we need to fast for is not only power. Somebody say power. Say purity. But here's the, the third thing that I believe. We want to fast for progress. Fast for progress. Wherever the Spirit of God is moving, wherever the Holy Ghost is active, great things spring forth. Great things ought to be coming out of your life. Okay? Great things ought to be coming out of you. You should carry a breakthrough spirit. You should be known for progress. You should be known for growth. You should be known for breaking barriers. You should be known for defying the odds. Oh, my God. You should be known for doing things that your ancestors couldn't do. Your parents couldn't do. Your grandparents. There's some of our young people right now that are graduating college, and we celebrate them because we, we dropped out of school. Oh, you're not saying that. We dropped out of school. We, we, we dropped out of college. We, we went to DeVry and dropped out. ITT. We couldn't even make it <laughs> through technical school for three months. Talk to me. We quit because someone said we couldn't do it. But now we have a generation that graduating with degrees, bachelor's degrees, master's degrees. Come on. We're breaking the curse. We're, we're great things are for progress and movement. I can't wait to see what that kids gang, that new gen does in the days to come because we ought to progress. We ought to grow. We ought to go from level to level to level to level. Progress. Say, Lord, progress me. Grow me. Expand me. Enlarge me. Give me good success. You've given me a promise. I'm called to occupy the promise, Lord. I want to break. I want to break. Break through. I'm gonna break through, man. I'm gonna. I'm gonna break through my marriage. We're not gonna get divorced. Our marriage is gonna get better. Come on. I'm gonna break through in my finances this year. My business is gonna break through. My ministry is gonna break through. Come on, clap. Come on, get excited here. Come on, stir it up a little bit, man. It's okay to fast for power. It's okay to fast for progress. But understand why you're fasting for progress. You're going to need that protection. You're going to need that protection. In the book, in the book of Ezra, King Cyrus, and I find this so interesting that this is the very promise the Lord gave to Victor. He says, I will give you the treasures out of darkness, hidden riches in secret places. But when you look at that story, it was King Cyrus who gave those hidden treasures and riches to the people of Israel to go back, to come out of bondage and to go back and to build the temple. And so Ezra went back with all of the gold and all of the silver and all of the wood and everything he needed in the favor of God to go back and rebuild the temple. And so what we find Ezra doing is he's looking ahead to what God was about to do. See, we should always fast. Hear me. We should always fast when God's about to do something. You say, why are we fasting this month? Because we're believing that God is about to do something good. Are you hearing me? Now, Ezra is at that brink and he calls a fast because he says, you know, as we make our way to Jerusalem to build the temple, we could get hit. We could get hit by robbers. We could get hit by thieves. We could get hit by, get hit, hit by critics. 
People could attack us along the way. Lord, we don't want only to fast for progress, but we need to fast for protection. Why should Victor Arch San Diego fast? Because listen, we're going into 2023 saying, Lord, you're going to do some mighty things, but we need your hand to be upon our life. We, we need your hand to be upon our family. We need your hand to cover us because the devil, I don't know if you figured this out yet. Have you figured this out yet? The devil hates us. He doesn't want to see us break records. He doesn't want to see us break through. He doesn't want to see our children go to it. So we need the hand of God to protect us. We need the hand of God to cover us. We need the hand of God to surround us. That's why we should fast together. See, when you're facing a private problem, you should do a, a private fast. Because that problem pertains just to you. But when you have something that pertains to the group, that everybody in the group should fast. Mom, dad, you shouldn't be the only one fasting this year. You, you, you got to get that spouse fasting with you. You, you got to go to them and say, look, I'm not going to fast by myself. You, you got to fast something. You got to also fast because this thing affects both of us. And you got to get those kids fasting one way or another. You got no McDonald's, no Happy Meals, no Happy Meals this month. Mijo. No, no net nuggets, no Chick-fil-A. Vegetable soup, vegetable soup. <laughs> we're fasting because we're all in this together. And the breakthrough that God wants to bring is not just for me. The breakthrough is for every single one who is in the family, who's in the home. Come on, who's serious about this thing? This is a time of breakthrough. And, and even as a church, we, we need to fast. God wants to do some mighty things in our midst. And, I, and if this is going to be the year of the harvest, let me tell you what I'm fasting for. I'm fasting that the Lord will keep you this year. That, that when we celebrate New Year's, you're here on January 7th, first Sunday of the year. But December 31st, you'll be here stronger than ever. Come on, somebody. We can't bring people through the front door and lose you through the back door. I'm going to come on, clap if you believe like your pastor. We, 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 we're not just called to save. We're called to keep. We're called to grow. We're called to expand. We're called to raise up. We're called to build you up in the house of God. This is your house. This is your house. This is your house. And, and we need to fast. We need to fast. We need to say, Lord, I know you want to give me power. You want to give me purity, but you want me to progress as well. And Lord, I need your protection. And that's what we're going to do. I want you to stand with me today. We all need different things from the Lord. We all need different breakthroughs, different miracles, different words from the Lord. And what I want to do right now is I just want you to talk to God in your own way. And I don't want you to be quiet. Listen, it's not a time of meditation. Meditation is a time for your mind and you're just focusing. No, this is a time of prayer. You, in order to pray, you have to open your mouth. You have to open your mouth. You have to say, Lord, I need a breakthrough in this area of my life. Lord, I need a breakthrough in my health. I need a breakthrough in my family. I need a breakthrough in my mind. So right now, all over this place, wherever you are, just right now, verbalize it. If you want to come to this altar, just slip out of your seat. We got a couple minutes. Slip out of your seat. Stand up here. This is an altar of prayer. And just right now, just and you could walk around. Father, I need a breakthrough. Lord, I want a breakthrough in my ministry. I want a breakthrough in my business. Lord, I want a breakthrough in my prayer life. Lord, I'm going to fast. I'm going to fast for a breakthrough. Some of you could even say, God, give me a breakthrough spirit. Give me a breakthrough spirit that, that I carry such a spirit that when people connect with me, they also break through. But right now, you need to just, come on, begin to get out of that seat. Get out of that chair. Get out of that religious posture. Come on, move around. I need a breakthrough. Oh, you're the Lord of the breakthrough. I need a breakthrough, God. I want a breakthrough. I know there's more. I know I could go deeper. I know I could go higher. And I know I could go farther. I want a breakthrough in my body. I've been sick too long. I, I want to live. I want to live and not die.